Good afternoon, everybody. It's your boy, Pigskin Pete. Happy Saturday to everybody. Who's ready for Clemson versus Wake Forest? I know I am. Let's see who's in the chat here real quick. Then we'll talk about some of the stuff that's happened at these noon games. What's up, Tiger Nation? Clemson Carson's in the house. Edward Craven. Uh, Gary McDaniel. Yeah, Gary McDaniel. How you doing? Says, I hope they get 100 to nothing. Yeah, me too. Um... Yes, so the big news of the day today, obviously, is the injury to Tua Tunga Valoa in the Mississippi State game. He's going to get a lot of criticism for that. He's going to get a lot of criticism for being up, what was it, uh, 35 to 7 or something, and leaving Tua in there. He said uh, at halftime, he said that that was going to be his last series. But he was hurt going into the game. I think once you got up 21 nothing, you take him out. I mean, what's the point? They pro- you know, there's a lot of people that will say he probably should have never played in the game to begin with. I don't see any problem with him playing in the game. But why give him one single more snap than you, than you need to? Um, hindsight's 2020, So it's easy to blame the coach uh, when he was going to take him out. He just took him out one series too uh too late so it is what it is hopefully anyway you know I, I hate to see any player get injured but especially the great ones so hopefully it's not as bad as it looked it looks to me it sounds to me like he probably broke his hip which would be not first of all it would end his season this year but but after that it would end uh, or it would seriously affect maybe where he's going to be drafted that, that's something, an injury that can that can end your career. That's what ended Bo Jackson's career was a broken hip. But even if you heal from it, it's going to be a year. So there may be, you know, teams that need a quarterback right now, like the Dolphins or, or uh, well, several other teams that, that would possibly draft Tua with their first pick in the draft that may be looking elsewhere if he's got a broken hip because they need somebody that's going to start immediately, not somebody that's going to have to uh, heal from a broken hip. So it affects him for the combine. He won't be able to participate in the combine. So it's, it's a big deal if he did break his hip, which uh, I hope he didn't. Um, anyway, so prayers to Tua. You know, again, like to, a lot of trash talking goes on in, in college football and, in, and on this YouTube channel and everything else. But I don't like to see anybody get hurt. So I hope he's all right. Uh, right now, Penn State, they just scored a touchdown – I thought Penn State was supposed to be good. Weren't they four a couple weeks ago? I don't know. What happened with that? Anyway, they've been uh, playing it close all game here with Indiana. But they just scored another touchdown. There's only a minute and 15 seconds left in this game. And now Penn State's up by 10, so that game's probably over. Does Wake Forest... What's up, Joel uh, Trimble? Does Wake Forest have a chance? What's up, Hound Dog? Um... I mean, I, I guess so. I mean, I, how big of a chance? So you're saying there's a chance? <laughs> I mean, you know, unfortunately for Wake Forest, Wake Forest does have a uh, a very good offense. I think they're ranked in the top 20 in offense nationally. But um, their their star receiver, who's one of their NFL receivers, is hurt and out for the season. He got hurt, uh, I guess, in practice this week. So, or did he, he either got hurt in practice or he got hurt in the game last week. I don't remember which one, but that's a big blow to them. But um, the problem is Wake Forest defense is not going to be able to stop Travis Etienne and Justin Ross and T Higgins and Lynn J. Dixon. I mean, it's, if, if, if Wake Forest wants to even have a chance, they're going to have to score 30 points. And I don't see that happening against Clemson's defense. Clemson's defense hasn't allowed 30 points to anybody. I doubt it's going to be Wake Forest. We'll see though. Yes, one in a million, so there's a chance. That's right, exactly. (laughs) Uh, In other news, I don't know where you guys are in the country. I know where some of you are, but the weather here sucks. Hopefully, it does not affect my my internet signal for the stream at at any point, but it's pouring down rain outside. It's cold as crap, and uh, yeah, I just hope I don't have any cable or internet issues as a result of this, and then also I have a house full of toddlers we're babysitting a baby and a toddler and we have our own toddler so that could always be an interruption too can't do anything about it 
But how's your day going? Everybody give me your uh, your score predictions. It looks like 56 to 14 is Tiger Nation's prediction for this game. Uh, the, there's another game coming on at the same time. That's the Georgian-Auburn game, which is a game I really wanted to see. But it's on at the same time as Clemson. And then tonight we have... I think tonight's Baylor in Oklahoma, right? That's where game day was today in Baylor. And then uh, we also have uh, – who else plays tonight? I know there's another game I'm thinking of. I can't think of it right now. But, yeah. 55-17 to 17 says Clemson alum 98. Uh, not raining in your part of South Carolina. It must just be raining down here where I am then. It's, it's been raining for three days straight. It hasn't stopped. And it's uh, it's still raining right now. 55 to 13, 49 to 17. You know, last week I almost predicted it. Last week's score when, uh, here on the stream when I when I did the Clemson versus uh, hell, I forgot who they played. Now <laughs> that's how bad it was. <laughs> who did they play last week? Oh God, I can't even remember. Anyway, I predicted the score. I predicted 55 to 14, and it was 55 to 10. And actually, there's somebody in the chat. If you're in here right now, NC State, yeah. If you're in here right now, somebody, there was somebody that predicted it uh, before the game exactly. They said 55 to 10. What's up, Larisha? Robbie Brown, 49 to 7. Uh, yeah. I say, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say my prediction is going to be, I think we'll score over 50 again. I'm going to say 52 to 21. I'll give, I'll give Wake Forest some credit and say that they score 21 points. 50, 52 to 21. That's what I'm going with. Uh, we can win the North Carolina State Championship today. Yeah. Yeah. In other news, uh, the Gamecocks, who do the Gamecocks play tonight? Uh, they play Texas A&M, don't they? I might watch that later just to see how much of a train wreck that is. I bet on that game, I think. Yeah, I did. I took uh, – I took – Texas A&M as a 10-and-a-half point favorite. That game's in College Station. Uh, but in other news, they, uh, Ray Tanner, the, uh, the athletic director there for the Gamecocks, gave a press conference and said he's fully behind Will Muschamp. He's not going anywhere. Well, I already knew that. I think everybody else already knew that. They can't afford to buy him out. But what's going to happen when they fire Ray Tanner? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Uh, they fire Ray Tanner, and uh, guess who's out the door next, right? As soon as a, a new athletic director comes in there, they're going to want a clean house and get their own guy in there. And uh, Will Muschamp will not be that guy. So, yes, I'm fully behind him. I, 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 I praised. I had a party whenever they gave him that six-year extension a couple years ago. Uh, and I told them at that time that that was the worst mistake that they could have made. But thank you for doing it. It's worked like a charm. And uh, – of course, at that time, they were all people were telling me I was scared. Oh, you're just scared they gave him an extension. Well, I, no, there's nothing scary about Will Muschamp at all. Unless you're a Gamecock fan, then he's really scary. But as a Clemson fan, he's not scary at all. So I tried to tell these guys the guy was no good. Uh, they didn't want to believe me, but now they finally understand that I know what I'm talking about when I can see that this guy is no good. Larisha M. says cycling in. Let me tell you something. Breaking news. Drum roll, please. I have designed a T-shirt. That is, I think it's being printed now. It's a cycling out T-shirt. I will not give you um, the specifics of what is on the shirt or what the picture is on the shirt, but they should be for sale sometime in the next couple of weeks. I'll obviously be showing you what the T-shirt looks like whenever they're, they're finished, and I'll put them for sale. I'll put a link up uh, for for the website where you can buy them. I'll put that uh, link up on my YouTube channel. Also on, over on howardsrock.net, we'll be selling them if, you're, uh, if you go over there. But anyway, all you Clemson fans are gonna love this shirt. It's awesome, I'm telling you. I think right now what we're gonna do is print uh, uh, one in black t-shirt and maybe one in a white t-shirt. I don't really think any other colors are gonna work. Maybe we could eventually do a purple T-shirt with, uh, with this design on it. That might work. But right now, I think we're going to do black or white and then, you know, the basic sizes. And I don't know what the, the cost of the shirt's going to be yet. But I know that we're using 
a uh, a good t-shirt company so it won't be a crappy um uh, you know product as far as the the quality of the t-shirt but uh yeah, I, sh I did show the design to Tiger Nation. He said he liked it. I showed it to a couple of people that I know. Um, I was gonna—I really wanted to post it online on Twitter and stuff to to get just to get it out there to get people seeing it. But I didn't want anybody to steal the design until I start selling the shirt. It's that good. But I'll be getting myself several of them. <laughs> It'll be out. I'll let you know soon, Larissa. I think. The guy texted me yesterday and said they should be up for sale. They should be done making them and should be up for sale within an, uh, a week or two. So I'm just waiting on confirmation. So just sit tight. Yeah, so Penn State wins. Michigan slaughtering Michigan State as well. That's another game that's on right now. I don't know why anybody's surprised about that. Michigan State's awful. Um, obviously, Alabama took care of business against Mississippi State. Florida beat Missouri uh, like a redheaded stepchild. What happened to Missouri? They were on a five-game win streak, and now they've lost like four in a row. Yeah, it's pitiful. Of course, uh, Kelly Bryant's had a hard time staying healthy, but the real problem for, for Missouri has been their defense. What's up, Clark Kent? That's a cool YouTube name. Tell Superman I said hello. Uh, how's it going? It's going great, man. I'm amazing and fantastic. Uh, thank you for asking. They say that there's like uh, seven five-star recruits in Clemson today. Justin Flo is one of them. Obviously, the number one linebacker recruit in the country. And uh, a bunch of other ones. So today's recruiting day at Clemson. A bunch of guys taking their official visits. It's also senior day and obviously the last game this season in Death Valley, which is always the way they do senior day, the last, uh, last home game of the year. And then um, next week we'll be on a bye week, and then the week, at, well, the week after that's the, the uh, South Carolina game, uh, Thanksgiving week. Yeah, Justin Flo is a beast. He's, he, listen, he can go anywhere he wants. He's got offers from everywhere. So hopefully they can work their magic today, and hopefully he likes Clemson, which I think he will. I think, I'm pretty sure it's his first official visit there, from what I heard. So he's never been there before. That's what Dabo Sweeney's always said. He said, "I don't mind a guy telling me no as far as recruit. If they're if they're highly recruited, they can tell me no." He said, "But I want them to come to see, you know, a game day here. I want them to come see the university." Uh, and all that before they tell me no. If they tell me no after that, then fine. But just come. Just come see it. Uh, Clemson Carson says, I think Flo is coming to Clemson. So, yeah, I, I don't know if you were listening to Clemson Carson. I think you were on the, uh, the call-in show that I did last night. Um, uh, Dondre Crawford called in. and or, Mr., or Nice Guy TV, I think is the name of his YouTube channel now. And he was saying he's worried that you know, a lot of a lot of uh, linebackers for Clemson aren't you know first round picks in the NFL. It's more defensive end, defensive linemen, and and uh, and cornerbacks that are first round picks in the NFL for, from Clemson. But if you're a linebacker, first of all, Simmons this year is going to be a first round pick, so that's that doesn't matter. Who would you rather play for than Brent Venables if you're a highly recruited defensive player? So, I mean, I think he's the best defensive coordinator in the country. I don't really think it's close. Here we go. What's up, Reyes? Heather Ty. Yeah, last home game of the year. Here we go. Most exciting 25 seconds of football. Rub that rock, baby. Yeah, the weather looks good there. 
Hopefully it stays that way. Looks like it might be a little bit chilly, though. All right, Larisha. Yes, the season has flown by. It's flown by to me, too. It's the longest off-season in all of sports. College football is. It's only four months long. I mean, there are eight months a year there's no, uh, there's no college football on. Every other sport, there's a much shorter off-season. Is Clemson making the playoff for sure? If they, if they win out, they are, yeah. Uh, but they, they still have to win out. But, yeah. We're assuming they're going to win out. It starts today. They have to win today. Otherwise, they're not going to make it. <laughs> uh, I don't think they'll have a problem with South Carolina at all, honestly. But it is a rivalry game. It is in Columbia. The Gamecocks have nothing to lose. But I feel, I feel sorry for whoever the quarterback's going to be on that day. Uh, because, you know, Bentley... You know, as much of an interception mach machine as Bentley was, at least he was experienced. At least he's seen the type of looks that he's going to get from this Clemson Brent Venables defense in, in uh, the last game of the year this year. These other guys haven't seen it, and they're going to be in for a rude awakening. All right, let's get the show on the road here. Uh, has the game started? It's about to start right now. I didn't realize that Brian Dawkins was a senior. Or Brian Dawkins Jr. was a senior. I thought he was a young. I thought he was redshirted. <clears throat> I'll be flipping back and forth, you know, during commercials and stuff to this Georgia and Auburn game, which is obviously an interesting game and has playoff implications with Georgia sitting at four right now. It looks like that game is uh, going to be late coming on. Yeah, Simmons. Simmons has one more year of eligibility left, though. But he's not going to come back. I mean, why would he? He's projected to be a top 10 pick overall, probably. So he'd be foolish to come back. And, you know, you can't blame him. That's millions of dollars. I mean, if he was only going to be a second or third round pick, that I'd probably come back. But uh, where he stands right now, he won't be coming back. Skowski said he's coming back, though. So he, he's eligible for the draft, but he said he's coming back. Yeah, Travis Etienne probably won't come back either. Yeah, I, I'm sure he's got a high draft grade. He'll probably be for one of the – he'll definitely be one of the first running backs off the board, for sure. Well, probably in the first round somewhere. So, yeah. He, plus running backs, man, they uh, – you know, they only get so many so many years in the NFL to begin with, so you gotta go when you can if you're a high uh high draft pick. Can I stream the game? No, I, I can't. It's copyrighted. Uh you can stream me talking about the game. Here you go. The kickoff is received. And he's gonna take it back to about the what is that, the twenty nine? Yeah, Dixon's, yeah. We'll be fine at running back. I mean, obviously, it's hard to replace Travis Etienne. He's quite possibly going to go down as the most accomplished uh, player in Clemson history at that position as far as stats go and points and all that. All right, here we go. First and 10. 
Wake Forest got the ball from the 24. There's a bunch of flags on the play. False start. The noise is already getting to him. So first and 15 coming up. Yeah, there's that guy. There's that receiver I was telling you about that got hurt. The best receiver they got. First and 15. You know, the quarterback run, and he's only going to pick up about three yards. It's going to be second and 12. Will we see another either offensive or defensive lineman score a touchdown today? <laughs> now, last week it was John Simpson. Of course, last year it was uh, number 42, Christian Wilkins. The fridge package, second and 12 from the 22. They're going to hand the ball off. He's going to go nowhere. He's going to lose about two or three. Two or three yards. So it's going to be third and a mile, third and 15 or so. X Man's back. Xavier Thomas looks fully healthy. Uh, that's bad news for anybody who's playing quarterback against Clemson for the remainder of this season. <laughs> So Wake Forest, they just said, has the 11th best passing offense in the nation. It's pretty impressive. They're going to hand the ball off, and he's going to go nowhere. Running up the middle on Clemson's defense is not a good idea. I mean, I get what you're doing. You're trying to establish the run to set up your pass game. But if you think you're going to run it between the tackles against this defensive line and your and you're Wake Forest, you're out of your mind. Not going to happen. Yeah. He won't be at Wake Forest for long. He'll get a job somewhere else. All right, Amari Rodgers receives the punt. And he's got, length. he's got room. Cross the 50, across the 40. He's got one man to beat. Oh, he finally gets caught from behind. He runs into somebody, then fumbles. I think he was down anyway. But anyway, big time return all the way down to about the 25-yard line of the Demon Deacons. <laughs> I've never seen Amari Rogers truck somebody like that. He's not a small guy. He's thick, but he looks small, you know, just his height. He ran that guy over. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a if, – if things continue to go this way, it's going to be a long day for Wake Forest. Uh-oh, Mari Rogers looks like he hurt his uh, – he's holding his collarbone. Damn it. Lawrence with the quarterback keeper. Oh, he gets hit right in the mouth. I hate when he does that. Every time he runs the ball, I hold my breath. I mean – Tony Elliott, man, they love running the quarterback. Clemson's offense has always loved it. All right, first and 10 from the 18. Going to hand the ball off to ETN. Picks up a couple yards. What's up, college football maniac? How you doing, sir? Are you ready for the big game tonight against uh, the Aggies? Second and six from the 14. Play action. Over the middle. Complete to Higgins. Touchdown. That was almost too easy. That was too easy. 
They and they they love that play. The play action pass to Higgins over the middle. Anytime they get within inside the twenty or inside the fifteen, there's there's a twenty percent chance they're going to run that play at some point because it works. And uh, Higgins is he's he's hard to guard, <laughs> especially in short short space like that. Yeah. Yep. Florida Gators national champions. And what? Baseball? Maybe. Got to be talking about baseball. Seven to nothing Tigers. You know, if Wake Forest would have won last week, they'd probably be in the top 15 this week because of all the other teams that lost. And this would have been a much more interesting game nationally than it is. I mean, obviously it's interesting, interesting to us uh, you know, Clemson fans, but it would have been a much more interesting game nationally because they went from, I think they were ranked 18th or 19th in the playoff poll, whatever, and uh, – then they lost and they dropped out at the top 25, so that kind of that kind of sucked, but whatever. Fighting trolls, Tua has never has been airlifted to St. Venet since four miles from here. Not good. Uh, Rick Robinson, is that true? Wow. That, that, that is not good if he's been airlifted somewhere. Yeah. Is it that cold in Charleston? I mean, yeah, it's cold. It's probably like 30-something degrees outside, which is cold for here. Yeah, there's eighth-best stadium in the SEC. Only that orange glows. The blue is just. <laughs> Auburn decimates Georgia is your prediction, Georgia. George, huh? What happened to Tua? It appears he probably broke his hip. Uh, the way that he landed, I don't know if you guys saw the replay of the, the play got hurt on. The lay, way he landed was not good. He, he landed, like, with his knee, like, on his, like, face down he landed. With, and the guy he's, uh, fell on top of him with, with his full weight. But his knee was up, like, in his chest area. And immediately when the guy got off of him, he was grabbing his hip. And, uh, yeah, he, he couldn't put any weight on his, on his leg when he was, you know, had to be helped off and carted off. It, it, it definitely did not look good. Did not look good. Yeah. Sixteen's in the injury tent. I didn't see that. Maybe because that hit he took on that run. Maybe they're just making sure he's uh his head's okay or something. I don't know. He he took a shot right to the mouth. I know that. Yeah, he did go in the inner, in the tent. Why are you running Trevor Lawrence like he's a running back in, in a game that you're going to win anyway? I, I, I know they're going to just run the offense the way they want to run the offense, but I'm, I'm all for running the quarterback whenever you need to, but not when you don't need to. Why would you risk injury? Uh, what's up? Sven says, wants to see Golden Gophers or Baylor winning out. That's the committee doing them with Bama, Georgia, and all these teams. It, it'll all work itself out. I know people are getting a little bit... Uh, I know people are getting a little bit worked up over the, the current way that they're doing things, but it'll all work itself out. Minnesota has a chance to win out and win the Big Ten, and they'll be in if they do that. Um, same with Baylor. So, First and ten. Wake Forest back to pass. Intercepted. 
at the 42-yard line. Clemson ball. Who intercepted that? Was that Muse? Yeah, it was Muse. Muse is a senior. This will be his last uh, game in Death Valley. I know that. And he will definitely get drafted. I don't know where he's going to – I don't even know what position he'll play in the NFL. Probably safety, I guess. That's what he's played his whole time at Clemson. But he's been, he's also played some linebacker at Clemson. I don't know what, what he'll – he's a hell of a tackler. He's not great in coverage, even though he just got an interception there. He, historically not great in coverage. But he's fast and he hits hard. First and ten. ETN up the middle. Ran over a guy all the way down to the 20-yard line. First and ten. I would not want to try to tackle him when he's running full speed. So far, Auburn looking good. If this game turns into a blowout, you know, in the second half, I'll, I'll switch it over to the Auburn-Georgia game. But uh, not, it's, it's way too early to do that. ETN up the middle. All right, second and five. Yeah, in the meantime, guys, keep me updated on, on Orb, Auburn and Georgia. I'm, during commercial breaks, I'm going to switch over just to, to watch it. But Second and five. And ETN breaks a tackle in the backfield. He was, he was about to go down for a three- or four-yard loss, and he ended up uh, making it into about a three-yard gain there. So it's going to be third. Let's see where they say, where they spot it. I'll see the other one tonight, LSU and Ole Miss. Of course, all the eyes are on LSU. And this could be a trap game. I don't think that LSU is going to lose to Ole Miss, but it still could be a trap game after, the, after last week. And they're looking, if they're looking past Ole Miss this week, um, it could be closer than you think. It's third and two. Hand the ball to ETN up the middle. It's going to be a touchdown. He just, you can't bring him down. Touchdown, Tigers. 14 and nothing. Hey, what's up, uh, Coulter? How you doing, sir? What, did, did Auburn just score? Sorry, I'm, I'm having a... It's saying I'm having an internet issue here. All right, switch it over here. So it looks like it's fourth down and Auburn's going for it, huh? Georgia took a timeout. Johnny says, I just heard Lou from 400 miles scream. <laughs> OU and Baylor predictions. That's a hard one to predict, man. I think Baylor could win the game. I think it'd be close, man. I don't know. It's a tough one to predict. What do you think? I, mean, I know I'm pretty sure you're an Oklahoma fan, so I wouldn't expect you to say anything other than Oklahoma's going to win, but are you worried? Yeah, two has uh, CT scans and MRIs. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. That's terrible for him. I feel bad.
Mario says he thinks Oklahoma wins big. Uh, Coulter says 45-35. That's a fair, that's a fair guess. I'm going to watch that game. Out of all the nighttime games, that's probably the most interesting one, honestly. I, I really want to see – I've only seen, I think, one Baylor game in its entirety this year. I've seen several Oklahoma games. But I'm really interested to see what, uh, what Baylor looks like against a really, really good team because Baylor hasn't really played any really, really good teams. So that will be a, an interesting game to watch. No, South Carolina does not win any of us in two weeks. You're right. Seven to nothing, Iowa State at Texas. That's not surprising. Oh, crap. That was turning the uh, channel back. All right, here we go. Clemson's going to kick it off again. 14 to nothing. First quarter. With all these touchdowns, this game could take a while. What's up, uh, Neto? What's up, Pete? Looking amazing and fantastic. Thank you, sir. Or ma'am. Uh, I think, I don't know which one. <laughs> All right. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see... Uh, a half empty stadium or, or at least it's, it's, there's already going to be a lot of Clemson fans at the game anyway, even though it's in Columbia, cause there always is, but I wouldn't be surprised if you saw maybe more Clemson fans than South Carolina fans at that game. The South Carolina fans are, are starting to boycott these going to these games. First and 10 run up the middle for about four yards. It's going to be second and six. I hope so, Clemson Carson. That means we're winning big if we do. Yeah, keep me updated. Oh, my God. That was a bad. Uh, Xavier Thomas is a beast. Anyway, big big loss. <laughs> Missed field goal, Auburn. Oh my God. You cannot let Xavier Thomas come off the edge unblocked. <laughs> I mean, he's he will crush you. You'll have home field advantage in Columbia, or we will, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I listen, I really don't think that South Carolina has a shot this year. It's but it's college football. Anything can happen. But I don't know, man. It would just have to be a total and complete collapse by Clemson for that to, to ha happen. Even if South Carolina plays their best game of the year, they won't be Clemson if Clemson's playing their average game of the year. Uh, but it is what it is. They said they probably won't sell out. They'll sell out to Clemson fans, most likely. I mean, I don't blame the South Carolina fans. Well, I wouldn't want to go watch Clemson curb stomp you in your own stadium. That doesn't sound like fun. I don't blame them. You probably get those tickets for cheap if you buy them right now on StubHub or whatever, because there's a lot of people with season tickets who'd probably be just selling their tickets for whatever, thirty bucks or whatever, just to uh, just to get rid of them. Which would, that doesn't sound like a bad a a bad. Uh, I've never been to a Clemson and South Carolina game in Columbia before. And I don't know if I would do it. I don't really, you know, I'm not looking to uh, to get in a fight for no reason with somebody. Like somebody, if somebody wants to try to start shit with me just for being a Clemson fan, uh, I don't need that. I'm not trying to go to jail. 
and believe me, they'll do it. We need a new rival. Yes. Yeah, they're experts at throwing bottles. That's for sure. <laughs> and I was thinking today when I was watching the Mississippi State game with Alabama earlier, what's more annoying? That stupid ass rooster that calls out every five seconds at that at the Carolina games or those cowbells. I think the cowbell might be the most annoying sound in all of sports. I can't think of one that's more annoying. Even more annoying than the rooster. I mean, just constantly, that, that stupid-ass cowbell. I could not sit in the stands at Mississippi State for an entire game. There's no way I could do it. I'd go crazy. All right, here we go. From the 25. Back to pass. He's got nowhere to go. Quarterback's trying to uh, get away, and he's not going to get even back to the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose a yard. Oof. Uh, what's my opinions about the Browns Steelers brawl? Uh, I, I did a whole like long thing on that last night on my um, Colin show. You might want to go back and rewatch that. I mean, look, uh, basically, I think it was terrible. I mean, I'm not. There was a lot of people at fault, but if 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 a, if a giant human like Miles Garrett tries to swing a helmet at it hit you in the top of the head, and you're not wearing a helmet. That's a major problem. I, I mean, he's again, he's lucky he didn't hurt him a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. So, it was embarrassing is what it was. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, cowbells take the cake. Joshua says he just might go to Willie B just to piss off some coots, which that is always a good reason to go. Yes. I've been to several South Carolina games in my life, but never when they were playing Clemson. Um, I've seen them play Arkansas. God, that was that was in the '90s. The Arkansas game I went to. I've seen them play Vanderbilt. Uh, I've seen them play Tennessee. I think that's the three games I've been to for them. First and ten. I think I've been to three South Carolina games in williams Bryce, and they've only won one of those times that I saw the game. They, I think they beat Arkansas that day. I don't think they beat Tennessee or Vanderbilt at the time I saw them. can't remember. It's been so long. First and 10. ETN up the middle again. And he's going to be taken down after about a five-yard gain. <laughs> Yeah, Rodgers, is he in the game? So, Trevor Lawrence has a knee brace on. Second and five. Hands off to ETN again. He's going to get the first down and much more. First and ten. Tigers from around the 47-yard line. He picks up about four or five yards before he's even touched on every play. Yeah, Rodgers hurt. It looks like his collarbone or his shoulder or something. He got hurt on that very first play of the, uh, or not the very first play of the game, but the very first punt return. Lawrence dumps the ball off. To J.C. Chalk, and he's going to pick up about nine. It'll be second and one, I think. No, that's a first down. I'm looking at the damn field goal target line. Yeah, no, it is second and one. The field goal target line and the uh, the first down line are the same line. I don't think Clemson will move <clears throat> from their third spot if they went out. Uh, 
if LSU, Ohio State, and Clemson all went out, I think they'll maintain their one, two, and three spots, if that happens. And then there'll be a bunch of teams vying for that fourth spot. Oklahoma, Baylor, Oregon, Utah, Minnesota, Georgia, Alabama. Be a bunch of teams in the mix. First and ten. He's going to do a play action. And he's going to try to dump it off to, it looks like, was that Overton? And missed them. I don't know, man. I kind of I I feel like if if Tua's not Tua, I got Tua on my mind with the injury deal. If uh, if Trevor's got a knee brace on, I'd take him out. What do you, what's the point? What do they need to be playing him for? Take him out. Hands it off to Etn or is that Dixon? That was Dixon. He picks up about three. Or they say two, third and eight. I don't think Bama's going to get in the playoffs, especially now that two is gone. Um, plus, they need a lot of help. What's up? Nathan Spratt says his, his Pitt Panthers are doing pretty good. What's the score in that game? And Trevor Lawrence is blitzed, and he's going to be sacked for a big loss. So we're seeing a, the, force, the first fourth down scenario for Clemson so far this afternoon. And they are right on, they're in field goal range. So I'm assuming they're going to kick a field goal here. We'll see. Yeah, take them out. We don't need them to win this game. What in the hell was that? Spires. Spires is going to give me a headache, man. First of all, he's not a very good punter as far as kicking the ball. And then this. He, he fumbles the uh, – it was a perfect – there was nothing wrong with the snap. Dude. All right, so Wake Forest gets the ball on a turnover here. Big, uh, big field position swing. So now they got it inside uh, the thirty-yard line in Clemson territory. And they do a RPO there and pick up about five yards, six yards. You know he's about to get chewed out by Sweeney. Sweeney loves chewing out kickers. <laughs> he's done it throughout his entire career. <laughs> Second and three. Quarterback going to keep the ball, and he's going to get a first down and more all the way down to about the 11-yard line. Well, if they if they end up scoring here somehow, uh, our hopes and dreams of them taking Trevor Lawrence out after that drives uh, are over. Probably wasn't going to happen anyway. They were going to keep him in for the first half anyway. But uh, if the game's only a touchdown game, then they're they're not taking him out. All right, Tanner Muse with a good big play there.
What's up, Mighty Duck Action 2002-2003, watching Ohio State and Rutgers. That's probably a slaughter already, isn't it? What's the score in that game? 100 to nothing in the first quarter? Second and 12. They're going to hand the ball off a pick up maybe a yard. So it's going to be third and 11. Nice guy TV in the house with a $2 super chat. Says, nice, nice guy TV in the house. Check me out. Yes, everybody go check out his YouTube channel. He's, got, he's a Clemson guy. And my thing is telling me I'm off line. Yeah. <clears throat> Looks like I'm having Looks like I'm having internet issues. Uh, Buckeyes fan, it's, it's 14 to nothing, Ohio State winning, and it's about to be 21 to nothing. Right. Yeah, Coulter, anybody who thinks that Clemson wouldn't be a threat in the playoffs hasn't been watching, paying attention to college football for the past decade. I mean, I know people are tired of Clemson, but... <laughs> Uh, these people saying that Clemson would lose to LSU or Ohio State by 20 points and all this craziness. I mean, I don't know what people are smoking, but I need some of it because they're delusional. Georgia scored. How did they score? All right, here we go. Can Wake Forest score here? Third and 11 from the 11 or from the 12. The ball is snapped. Back to pass, throws it, and the pass is blocked. Knocked out of the air. It's going to be fourth and 11. What does Wake Forest do? If I'm Wake Forest, why not go for the touchdown? What, what, the chances of you getting down to the 11-yard line again is pretty slim. So you may as well go ahead and, and go for the for everything. A field goal is not going to do you any good against Clemson. Sorry, it's just not. But they're going to do a field goal. This guy has made 27 consecutive field goals. Jeez. Let's hope he uh, goes 27 and 1. Kick is up, and the kick is good right down the middle. So Wake Forest gets on the board after a terrible and awful turnover by uh, Will Spires, the punter for Clemson. They get down in good field position and, and uh, muster a field goal out of the uh, whole deal. So the current score is going to be. 14 to 3. Yeah, just I don't know guys, there's some crazy stuff going on with my uh with the internet. I told you the weather's extremely bad out there. It's windy, it's pouring down rain. I kind of uh, expected this to happen. So Who is the NCAA D1 leader in career points? In career, are you talking about a player or a team?
You're talking about a team? First of all, I don't have any idea. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I'm assuming you're going to tell me it's Oklahoma since you're an Oklahoma guy, uh, which wouldn't surprise me. <clears throat> All right. So after the field goal, Wake Forest goes to kick the ball off. The kick is up, and it's going to be received at the 10-yard line. And he's going to get it back. Oh, Darian Kendrick, and he runs it out to about the 25. He runs out of bounds at the 25. Individual player. I don't... Uh... I don't know. Who is it? Well, whatever happens with that George Auburn game, I hope it stays under 44 points total because that's what I, I bet on my bet now uh, charity picks. See someone saying that George is all over Auburn's ass. Barry Sanders is your answer? It's possible. I would have thought I'd been a quarterback. Unless it was a running back from back in the day. Lawrence back to pass, and he's going to be sacked for about a 10-yard loss. What the hell was that? Jeez. That was terrible. Austin Siebert. What is he, a... Uh, is he a field goal kicker or something? Third and 17. What what was this? This is a pitiful drive right here. Dabo's not happy about something. I think uh, Lawrence might have made a mistake there. Yeah, Rutgers is in bad shape. I mean, we already knew that they're bad, but they're even worse than bad this year. They're just uh, they're they're awful. A place kicker for OU. He's now a place kicker for the Browns. Oh. Hmm. Four hundred ninety-nine points as a kicker. It's a lot. Yeah, I'm definitely having internet problems.
Yes, I heard. Yeah, I already spoke about the uh, the Tua injury. Doesn't look good. Is my uh, <clears throat> somebody let me know? Is is my is the does the stream keep freezing or dropping? It's telling me that it is. And I'm starting to get annoyed with it. Yes, it does. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I gotta try to fix this because I can't go on for another two hours like this. It's really getting on my, on my nerves. I'm going to have to shut this stream down. If I can get the internet situation straightened out, I'll start another one. But I, I don't know. I can't do this for two hours. So just stay, stay tuned. Keep your notifications on. Thank you.